Dr. Badr Dawood is an assistant professor, a consultant of emergency medicine and critical care. Uh, he's the chair at uh, King Saud University Medical City in Riyadh, graduated from McGill University. We'll talk about auto resuscitation. Dr. Badr. Assalamu alaikum. Good morning, everyone. Um, so, talk about auto resuscitation or bringing our patients back from the dead. Um, I have nothing to disclose, so no conflicts of interest. The objective of my talk will be talking about other station. So what is it exactly? And does it really exist? And is there an evidence behind it? It's the impact on our patient. And are there any recommendations uh, concerning these phenomena? Can the dead come back to life? The other tangible name or term is Lazarus phenomenon, based on the Christian Bible when uh, Lazarus died and after a few days, Jesus revived him back from the death. And hence the term Lazarus phenomena was interchangeably related to auto station. And we hear about these stories, patients declared dead and then later in the morgue, the patient was actually alive and they called him dead and they read it in newspapers and, uh, and, and some reports. And how common is that and what exactly happened? So do these patients really come back from the dead or there is something happening? So first of all, what are the definitions? Lazarus phenomena. Lazarus phenomena is basically return of spontaneous circulation following the cessation of CPR or discontinuation of CPR. Autorestation is also return of spontaneous uh, circulation following cardiac arrest with or without CPR. So they are, they are interchangeably used terms. So I'm just gonna ask you all, just show of hands, uh, Anybody never heard about these phenomena before? Just show of hands. Okay. Have you heard or read about it? Never seen it? Show of hands. Okay. Have you heard reports of others who have seen it? Your colleagues or, or people that you know? Show of hands. Okay, a few people. Have you ever seen it yourself? Okay, so there's people who actually have seen it before. I've seen it myself when I was doing my fellowship in the ICU. I called the patients dead, and then later after a few minutes, five minutes, the nurse were coming, running to me. He's like, doc, he has actually pulse. I was so confused, and I called my consultant again after declaring that patient dead. And he was like, yeah, it's probably Lazarus phenomenon. So I was like, okay, I've read about it, but I didn't really actually thought that it exists. So, this is, we're talking about case reports. It's very rare. It's extremely rare. This is an example of a case report Hanning and his colleagues. Uh, here, this patient was found at 1510 uh, in the cardiac arrest. Bystander CPR was, was started. And then EMS arrived at 1513. He was having, uh, he was found to have VF and he was shocked. And then at 1515, uh, emergency physician arrived and knew the advanced life support. At 1555, he arrived to the emergency department and got uh, VF. Resuscitation ceased at uh, 1502, which is after one hour of resuscitation. And then after two minutes, he was ha found to have agonal breathing. And then at 1607, he was found to have faint pulse. And then at the same day, at 1640, echo was done and ejection fraction was 15%. And it was thought uh, to be most likely stunned myocardium. And on the same day, at 1715, the patient was following commands. And after one hour, he was actually eating his soup uh, in the ward. Autorestation after a systole in patients being considered for organ donation. So people who work in the ICU, 
uh, those patients now, uh, they are considered for uh, donation after cardiac arrest, not only after brain death, but those patients, uh, they get their organs uh, donated or harvested after they declare them death uh, in a cardiac arrest uh, situation. And usually they try to bring them to the OR within a few minutes just because they want to uh, harvest the organs. And these phenomena and Lazarus phenomenon and autorestation is something that uh, will have to be considered when, the, when doing this. Because basically you're being, being a patient who's probably maybe alive and you're basically putting him in the OR and harvesting his organ. This case series looked at it uh, and they thought or they saw that extubation to death was 22 minutes. No patients exhibited autorestation during the five minutes waiting observation period including the first two minutes after systole. So for those patients who are considered for organ donation after cardiac death, the absence of autorestation in our series suggests that a two minutes observation period is sufficient to determine the death after cardiac arrest. Uh, this is just suggested there is no clear guidelines to these uh, events. So again, it's very rare. We're talking about case reports. Uh, Lazarus phenomenon after failed CPR reached about 7 or 10 minutes max. And no reached autoresuscitation without CPR. There is only one case report in a patient who was DNR and then he had cardiac arrest and then after 5 minutes uh, he had ROSC again. There was actually a uh, systematic review which was done by uh, Hornby and her colleagues from McGill and Ottawa. Uh, they looked at the literature for all these cases. It was published in 2010 and updated in 2018. Looked all and all the cases reported uh, in the literature. Uh, so you can see here, they are from different countries, Canada, US, Denmark, Turkey, uh, adults. And there is actually three pediatric cases that had uh, such uh, phenomena. And most of them actually inter, uh, are interhospital cardiac arrest. And the length of CPR was varied between 10 minutes up to 90 minutes max. And most of them are asystole cases. So yeah, uh, looking at the time from cessation of CPR to arrest or arrest to unassisted return of spontaneous circulation, you can see here that some of these patients had recovered fully, which means that neurological outcome uh, was, was okay with those patients or they had minimal uh, neurological impairment. And you can see that the time of uh, return of spontaneous circulation after stopping the station was between two minutes up to 10 minutes, nothing more than 10 minutes here. So the concept of death is a bit tricky. Uh, there is the religious or cultural concept of death, which is out of the scope. And there is the operational definition of death, which is basically provable and that we can do tests to confirm it. So diagnosing death, is it as easy and simple as we think? This is a study by Danani and his colleagues. Uh, they looked at the criteria for determining death after cardiac arrest. And they looked at different countries uh, in terms of their protocols of uh, diagnosing death or confirming death. And actually, there was variability and there was no consistency about the confirmation of death in different countries. So some countries, they said cardiocirculatory criteria alone is sufficient. Others, cardiocirculatory criteria plus prolonged period to ensure brain death. According to accepted guidelines, according to national authorities, there's no specified criteria and it's not consistent through all of the world. Again, here's a summary of wait time period required to satisfy criteria of death. Again, from different countries, Australia, Canada, China, France, uh, Great Britain, and the US. As short as a few minutes longer if death is unexpected. So basically, this is a vague uh, sentence. And this is in one of centers in the US. Two minutes in Australia at least two minutes and not greater than five minutes in a few centers in the US. And this is actually the Society of Critical Care Medicine recommendation. Five minutes in Canada, 10 minutes in China, best medical judgment in the US, left up to the hospital policy 
and one center in the U.S. So there is discrepancy and inconsistency about the time period of observation for patients after you stop CPR for them. So, few minutes, two minutes, five minutes, ten minutes, but most of them are less than ten minutes, nothing more than ten minutes here. The Society of Critical Care Medicine in 2001 recommends two, to, uh, two minutes and not more than five minutes. Uh, in CMAG uh, 2006, uh, an article uh, stated that international perspective on the time interval required to confirm death after cardiac arrest generally varies between two to ten minutes. Pediatrics, as you have seen before in the systematic review, there was three cases of pediatric uh, autorestation. Uh, so it still happens in pediatrics and adults, and adults more than pediatrics, obviously. So there is a general thought that it's being underreported. So it's actually more common that, than we think. And the question is, why is it underreported? What are the reasons behind this? One of the main reasons is medical legal. When a physician calls a patient to stop and then later he found out this patient is actually alive and he has ROSC, uh, the patients may sue him, the family may sue him, uh, the hospital may sue him. So they try to underreport it or not uh, report it uh, uh, in the literature. The other thing is colleague pressure. So if you're with your colleagues and you declare a patient's dead, and then later uh, the patient's actually having ROSC, so basically they're saying he almost killed the patient. So this puts pressure of underreporting such cases. Uh, and also the psychological trauma. I mean, this patient you almost killed, so you're going to feel the guilt. So those things will affect the decision of reporting the case or not. Etiology and explanation. So there are true cardiac arrest uh, etiology, and there is other factors. Basically, physicians and experience or uh, physicians oversight. Uh, so basically, patients is, uh, the, the physician is feeling the pulse. I'm not sure if he has pulse or not. Uh, it's very vague, vague or weak or, or faint. Uh, and the other thing is the medication. The epinephrine, once you give it, it takes time to reach the heart. So with CPR, once it stopped, uh, after a few minutes, the epi reaches the heart or the calcium gluconate reaches the heart for hyperkalemia and then ROSC ensues. The other main uh, explanation is actually PEEP. When you bag a patient in a panic uh, response to a cardiac arrest, you basically hyperinflate the chest, which will increase the intrathoracic pr pressure. And this, as we know, will affect the venous uh, return and preload and will cause uh, the decrease in venous return. And then eventually the cardiac arrest will improve once you stop resuscitation. And then the intrathoracic pressure will slightly drop and then cardiac circulation will start. The other thing is no one is dead until they are warm and dead. Please check the temperature of the patient before you pronounce him dead because this may cause such phenomenon. Countermeasures. All patients should have an ECG monitor for 10 minutes after the cessation of resuscitation. Do not bag too fast or, and avoid hyperinflation when you're doing CPR. Use capnography for prognosis. And echo, look at the heart. Do not only use the pa pa palpating the pulse. Palpate the pulse and look at the heart when you're doing CPR. So in summary, autorestation and Lazarus phenomena are rare, but could happen. Monitor the patients for 5 to 10 minutes after the cessation of resuscitation. Avoid chest hyperinflation during CPR. And use echo and capnography during CPR. Thank you for your attention.